All right, all set. All right, great. Welcome everybody to the Amherst Design Review Board meeting of January 29th, 2024. My name is Erica Zikas, and as the chair of the Amherst Design Review Board, I'm calling this meeting to order at 5.02 p.m. The meeting is being recorded and will be made available via the Town of Amherst YouTube channel and minutes are being taken. Pursuant to Chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021 and extended again by Chapter 2 of the Acts of 2023, this meeting will be conducted via remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so via Zoom or by telephone. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. A hyperlink to the hearing will be posted on the town's online calendar. Board members, I will take a roll call and when I call your name, unmute yourself and answer affirmatively. Catherine Porter. Here. Lindsay Schnarr. Here. Karen Winter. Here. Oh, uh, Pat Auth. Present. And Erica Zakis, present. We're also joined by Rob Wachilla and Chris Brestrup from the town. Uh, board members, if technical issues arise, we may need to pause temporarily to fix the problem and then continue the meeting. If the discussion needs to pause, it will be noted in the minutes. Please use the raise hand function to ask a question or make a comment. I will see your request and call on you to speak. After speaking, remember to remute yourself. The general public comment item is reserved for public comment regarding items that are not on tonight's agenda. Please be aware that the board will not respond to comments during the general public comment period. Public comment could also be heard at other times during the meeting when determined appropriate. Please indicate that you wish to make a comment by clicking the raise hand button when public comment is solicited. If you join the meeting, uh, the Zoom meeting using a telephone, please indicate that you wish to make a comment by pressing star nine on your phone. When called on, please identify yourself by stating your full name and address and put yourself back into mute when finished speaking. Residents can express their views for up to three minutes or at the discretion of the Design Review Board Chair. If a speaker does not comply with these guidelines or exceeds their allotted time, their participation will be disconnected from the meeting. Tonight's agenda includes two uh, projects, uh, DRB FY 2024-10, William Nurse uh, from Astor and Pine Market and 2024-11 South Pleasant Street LLC. We'll have a general public comment period. Before that, um, approval of uh, the last meeting minutes and other business. So I believe the agenda has a general public comment period coming next. Rob, is there anybody in the audience tonight? would like to speak? Yeah, so just admire to folks in attendance. Uh, if you wanted to make a general public comment before the Design Review Board, you can do so by using the raise hand function or by pressing star nine on your phone if you're calling in. I guess we'll give people maybe 10, 15 seconds to do that. I am not see any hands up so i guess we can assume that we do not have any general public comment for the board tonight all right we'll go slow on the next part in case anybody has a last minute change of parts hmm. all right then well so then is um somebody in the audience as a representative for uh aster and pine so we do have uh bill nurse who i'm going to promote to panelist and um, I'm assuming he'll let us know if there's other people on his team who'll be joining as well. Sure. Hey, hi. 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 Greetings and welcome, um, Erica Zikos, Chair of the DRB with the rest of the panelists. Um, if you wouldn't mind, introduce yourselves and I'm happy to share my screen on your behalf with the materials that you submitted or you could share your screen. You'd let us know what, what you'd like to do. Uh, we'd like you to share the screen. All right, I'll do that. And while I'm getting that started, why don't you um, 
introduce yourselves and walk us through your presentation. So yeah, um, uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, my name is Bill, and this is um, my wife, uh, Mallory. Hello. We, um, you know, came to Amherst, and uh, we're ready to serve the community with um, this new vibrant store that's uh, uh, boutique wine, craft beer, uh, local produce, and unique uh, locally sourced as well as um, globally inspired ingredients. And um, my uh, wife um, is a interior designer, mm -hmm. and she um, is a, actually works at the Street of Kuhn Rural Architects, and uh, she'll be presenting the uh, the design for the exterior. Hello. Nice to see you all. As you can see, we're in our shop tonight, just for a little inspiration. <laughs> um, we're getting ready to open in February, so we're very excited. <clears throat> um, so just to talk briefly about the design, um, we want our facade to reflect our brand. Uh, so as you can see, the rendering and visual aids here show that. Um, <clears throat> to start with the existing facade, right now there's this fabric awning uh, that was previously for the uh, Vici salon that was previously here. And we are proposing to remove that um, fabric awning. And there is a wood awning that's existing behind it that you can't even see. Uh, so that kind of reveals the existing wood awning. And you can see that in the rendering above that image. Mm -hmm. So we're proposing to paint the entire awning and the facade in a color that reflects our brand. Um, and we think that by removing the awning, it will really engage uh, patrons as they pass by and allow for more merchandising opportunities, given this is now a retail environment versus a salon that it was before. Um, and so we're also trying to be mindful of the continuity in the existing facade. So, you know, to our left and right, there are those fabric awnings, but we think the wood awning really reflects that geometry and provides that continuity, which is nice from the street view. Um, and so in addition to painting the brick and the wood uh, awning that exists there, we're also proposing to add a window logo in the center window, as you can see in the elevation to the right of the rendering. We're just highlighting that as a circle right there. So it will be as you see it um, below, Astrum High Market. And we just have a little inspiration image to the right that kind of illustrates how we plan to paint the lettering for Astor and Pine Market above. Um, so above the, yeah, thank you. So above the windows, we're proposing to have our name hand painted above there. And we think with the light uh, creamy white color, it will really uh, pop with the dark facade. For lighting, um, I wanted to just touch on that. A lot of the, we've noticed that a lot of the adjacent storefronts utilize interior lighting to provide that glow at night and again, activate some of the merchandising at the window. And so we plan to do a similar thing by lighting from the interior. Does anyone have any questions? Yeah, I have to figure out how to unmute myself every time it's the same. <laughs> every month. Um, thank you for that presentation. Yes, yeah, does anybody from the, the board have any questions or comments? Let me know by flagging your hand or raising a digital hand and I'll call on you. Lindsay. Hello. Um, well, this is a really beautiful proposal and exciting to see this coming to town. So thank you for putting it together and um, I think my, my, my obvious only question is just in terms of the lettering, is it, um, is it the font that's shown in the rendering and elevation or the font that's shown in that pull out view down below? It will be the font that's shown in the view down below. Um, so that's our, uh, brand font. And so that will reflect that. So it's a little bit of a, um sans serif with the modern twist okay um great and i i'm not opposed to the painting on of the lettering but i do feel um hmm. 
I, I guess I'm curious about that choice, um, mainly because it doesn't offer the same kind of like reveal that you get or like the shadowing that you get from a, an applied lettering. Yeah, no, I agree. Um, metal lettering is often something that is, is a nice touch. Um, so we actually came to the decision to paint it um, based on a local vendor. I don't know if you're familiar with Hired Hands Painting. Mm. She's done a lot of great work around town. Um, and we just love her work. So we've had a meeting with her and, you know, she's providing us a proposal and she actually does a little bit of a shadow line behind the lighter lettering that gives it that pop, mm -hmm. but we love the hand painted look and we don't want it to look too commercialized or anything. So we mm -hmm. think adding the hand painting versus a metal letter or something applied would just give it that sort of like friendlier feel, if that makes sense. Do you, do you intend to do the shadow line? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I think that that sounds great. I'm glad to hear that. Um, and yeah, I'll open it up to other people. I think it looks beautiful. Yeah, I'll just briefly build on what Lindsay was going to say, because my only comment did also concern the, the lettering. And I noticed that the, um, the perspectival view had a, shows a bit of a shadow as though it's projecting from the face. And I actually think that that's a, an excellent feature. It's gonna help it to pop because the example that you showed with the white on the darker gray has a greater contrast than the cream on the green. Um, Rob? Oh, forgot to lower, how to lower my hand. Um, so I guess one question I have as a non-board member, um, in terms of the lettering above the window, is there going to be a way that's going to be, you know, visible, I guess, in the evening hours or like in your like 5 p.m. in the wintertime hours? So is there like like a street light nearby that might adequately light the area or something like that? There is a street light actually right in front. Um, OK. And so it does provide that glow. Um, and then we're just hoping that the light versus against the dark will also provide that contrast that will be mm -hmm. visible even in the evening hours. But there's mm -hmm. a lot of light on the sidewalk, actually. Yeah. Okay, that was my only question, I guess. Great. Thanks, Rob. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? Pat or Catherine or Karen? Karen, go ahead. Yeah, I think it's really exciting and looks so elegant. Um, I just want to tell you how enthusiastic we are to have you come. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. We're really excited to be yeah. here. Yeah. yeah. So, Catherine, go ahead. yes. Uh, well, it's such a great location, and your sense of style just is all over it. So, uh, I just, uh, I would agree with everything positive that can be said about it. And, uh, yeah, I think Amherst needs it and deserves it. And you deserve a chance to really make a good impression there. So that's my comment. Thank you so much. Excellent. Thank you. And I thought, um, Pat, you have your hand. And then Karen, yours is up as well. So you could go after. Yes, I do. I, I just want to echo the other comments. I had the same question about the lettering and the lighting. But I think that's been answered so that it will be prominent in its own way. But I'm delighted to have a business like this in the heart of Amherst. It's wonderful. Yeah, it's fantastic. Thank you, Pat. And Lindsay? So I um, was just tuning into the painting of the brick, and it looks like in the bottom left image of the existing facade that the neighboring business <laughs> is, is that Zana? Yeah. 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 So is that? Is that painted white brick right yeah. there? Yeah. And does it is it coplanar with the <clears throat> that is unpainted? Or does the is there like a bend in the planes? Yeah, so it actually like converges at that spot. There's a okay. slight fold. Um there's a slight fold. Slight fold, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I just I guess my only, you know, just word of a warn not warning but like you know just to be really diligent about trying to get that as clean as possible because i think that the paint against the paint on an uneven surface like brick can could be tricky um 
So I'm sure you'll you'll be careful with that. And then at the other corner, it's the the paint stops at that corner. Is that right? Yeah. Yes. Erica. So we did um think about, you know, when thinking through the design, we thought about maybe trying to turn the corner with the paint, but there is this um art piece that's in the brick. And we didn't want to disturb it. We don't really know um, you know, the origins of it. Uh, and then also Botanica's awning butts mm -hmm. up right against it. Mm -hmm. so the logistics of removing that to paint, you know, so that was our thought process through ending the paint at that corner. Erica, could you just scroll up to see that proposed corner? Okay. I mean, I think that looks really nice. So I, I have no issues. I just, you know, I just want to make sure it's as clean as possible. I think For that's sure. a really wise piece of advice, Lindsay. Yeah. For sure. We, we have a, um, a wonderful uh, painter that actually, um, uh, Brad Forbes uh, painting, he did the whole um, interior here and he already provided a quote for the exterior. So we did a trial run. So we yeah. got to see his work inside. Yeah. And he'll know he's, he'll be clean yeah. outside. It's very meticulous. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. <laughs> and then Pat, you've got your hand up again. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't. All right. I, it's well, like the <laughs> muting. I forget. <laughs> no worries at all. Um, we've heard from everybody, so I'm wondering if there is no additional um, comment. Although I do have one thing that one one question has just come up for me, um, and that's regarding um, any additional signage, like your hours, say, um, on the door, or if you treat that as like a temporary kind of sign. I really like what you're doing with the the uh, vinyl application on the or sorry, painted application on the window, but um, wondering if there would be any additional signage. Yeah, so um, perhaps the number, the street number above the door, um, just for clarity to make sure people know what number we are. Mm -hmm. um, but other than that, it would just be like a temporary, if we did do hours on the door, which we don't know we will, would be temporary. Mm -hmm. um, and just to speak to the vinyl versus painted on the window, um, to start, we're gonna do vinyl because they can't paint if it's too cold out so just for oh, the right. of vinyl and then just so that we have some visibility and then when they're ready to paint they'll do hand painted for the logo and the just to clarify so that we don't have to make you come back again the number if you do a street number on the door you'll stay in the same font yes yeah, same then font, we... color it will be small but you know enough to see for packages and things okay so can we entertain a, a motion to approve this project? I move that we approve the petition for Aster and Pine Market. Thank you. Is there a second? I second. Thank you, Beth. Um, all those in favor, please let us know. I see a unanimous vote. Thank you very much for being here. I wish you lots of luck in your opening days and thank you so much. We look forward to seeing you all in the shop. Yeah. We'll be there. <laughs> Everybody have a great evening. You as well. Take you care. Thank Thanks you. so much. Bye. Okay. Let me stop my share. How do I do that? should be at the bottom yeah, I know. yeah there you go. Like all these screens are overlapping yeah. and your hand is still up do you want to pop that down we can get ready for the next um all right so the next project <laughs> um is the South Pleasant Street. So any representatives in the audience for South Pleasant Street, make yourself known. So I do have a Jonathan Salvan, who I'm going to promote to panelists. And I'm assuming they'll tell me who else they need to promote after Great. the fact. I'm unmuted and uh, my video is <laughs> on. Rob, there should be. Uh, I think I suspect Barry Roberts is in the uh, in the audience somewhere. Possibly Tom Reedy yep. and John mm -hmm. Kuhn. I'm sending them all panelists links as we yeah. speak. You brought a whole party. Well, why not have fun? <laughs> <laughs>
I'm going to apologize. I have a bit of a cold. And so if I get squeaky at some point, uh, you'll have to forgive me. All right. So while everybody's coming on board, um, good evening, Mr. Kuhn. Oh, John, you need to unmute. Good evening. While everyone's coming on board, um, I just want to let everyone know, because this is such a comprehensive project, we're going to uh, move through the, what is it, nine, nine DRB guidelines, which is kind of part of our mandate. Um, and so we're going to I'm going to ask you all to uh, make your presentation as you would like to do, but then we're going to do our review with um, kind of item by item through the guidelines. It'll take us through things like height and proportion. Um, fair warning in advance that there, there's a lot of redundancy um, in these. Uh, we'll do our best to not make it excruciating. Um, and also, I just want to remind everybody that the DRBs um, purview, our, our, our mandate is to review kind of the exterior expression of the building and its um, materiality, uh, facade design, proportions, et cetera, uh, including uh, landscape and, and kind of pedestrian features as well. Um, and so we, we might be interested in what's going on inside the building, especially as it relates to how that's expressed on the exterior, but it's not really part of our review. So um, you could walk us through that, um, like what's happening on the, uh, in terms of floor plan design and things like that, um, but you don't really have to accept as it affects what's going on on the exterior, which is everything, of course, but hopefully that makes some sense. All right, um, and you have, I think, the ability to share your screen unless you want me to do the driving for you. I, I would be perfectly happy to do the driving. Great. Super. And uh, John and I are going to both uh, give this presentation. He's going to do the first piece, and I'll pick it up uh, partway through. i just like to check quickly uh, with Barry to make sure that he doesn't have an opening remark. Uh, he is... Uh, uh, you know, an integral part of the team uh, working with the current owners as as the developer. Oh, he's, I don't hear him chiming in. So I, I think, John, if you want to get going. All right. Well, good evening. Um, I, I'm assuming everyone can see the screen, by the way, and the an, an image of, of. Yep. Looks great, John. Okay. John, you want to start with this one or the next one? I'd actually go, I'd go back <laughs> to the previous one. Is that up now? Mm, no, the one you just had had up the aerial. Oh, okay. Yep. Yeah, I think this is a, a good place to start. Um, it's a pleasure to be here tonight. This has uh, been an exciting project to work on, and um, it's uh, exciting to actually finally uh, present it uh, in a public domain. Um, I think all projects like this have a, a story. And the story often uh, informs the design, and that's certainly the case here. I, I, what I'd like to do is just give a, a brief history and a little bit about how this project got off the ground, and then I'll uh, turn it back over to Jonathan to, to dig into the, more of the details of the, of the design. Um, this is a great aerial slide because it really shows uh, that, that part of downtown Amherst, uh, that section of buildings there is known as Merchants Row. Um, most of those buildings were built in the 1870s and 1880s. Um, and most, if not all of them, were designed by the same architect, William Fenno Pratt. He was a well-known architect in, in Northampton. He designed the Northampton City Hall, the, the Dickinson houses, the Hills houses, and many other structures in, uh, in this area. Um, the uh, the Hastings building, as we call it, was was built in uh, 1879, and um, in 18 uh, 1914, uh, Asa J Hastings uh, started uh, a stationery store. It was not in that location at the time; it was a little further down South Pleasant Street. But in uh, in 1937, it was it was moved into that location. Uh, uh, the the Hastings bought the building. 
and and ran it as a, a stationary store for many years. Uh, Ace's son, Don Hastings, and his wife Phyllis uh, ran it uh, in through the 70s and 80s. They lived on North Prospect Street, and I used to see them uh, walking to work um, during that period of time. Their son, David, uh, took over the store in the 80s. Um, and David uh, married Mary Broll, uh, and they ran. They they were going to take pick up the store as Don and Phyllis retired. Unfortunately, uh, David had uh, a tragic accident, passed away in 1997. Um, Sharon Povinelli, who's one of the other owners of the building and was owner of Hastings, uh, started working there in 1988 after getting out of UMass. Um, and so she and and uh, she wasn't really planning to to stay uh, in the retail business, but uh, she ended up doing so. And she and, and Mary became partners and ran Hastings for for many years. Um, as you all know, in June of 2022, they had to close down um, just because uh, I think it was a very difficult decision for them. But um, the retail business, especially in uh, the stationary line was is there's just a lot of competition and it was uh, it was difficult to to keep it open. So they have been since that time trying to figure out what to do both with the retail space but also with the building as a whole. And um, uh, they approached me back in um, in the spring. Barry they, they had actually talked to Barry and I think Barry had said why don't you talk to John Kuhn and so I. I met with Mary and Sharon and, and we walked through the building. Um, I'll pause there just for a minute because I want to mention two other, a couple other things while we're on this slide, uh, since they're pertinent to the project. Uh, 45 South Pleasant is the is the brown building, uh, right? Yeah, you see the cursor there. Um, somewhere under the bones there is a, an old historic building as well, but it's been renovated so many times over the years that um, you'd be hard pressed to find any anything historic about that structure. Um, it was um, also a, a retail for many years. It was a bookstore that started, a, a Jeffrey Amherst bookstore started about the same time as, as when Hastings moved into 55. And um, most recent owners of that were Joy and Howard Gersten. Um, and they closed in 2009. So that the main space in that building, the retail space on the first floor has been uh, vacant for 15 years. Uh, so that building uh, is, has come into play in this project as well. Behind the building, you can see the three-story L. Um, and that, that structure was added to the main building uh, sometime in the, in the late 19th century. Uh, it's three stories as well, but it does not, uh, the three stories don't connect to the three stories in the front section. So they're, they're kind of, it's kind of a very separate building. And the last thing I wanna mention uh, just from this aerial is the, uh, is to the left is, 70, is uh, 79 South Pleasant Street, which is, a, is the old uh, Baptist church. And it was a project Ken Riddle did some years ago. And I, I just pointed out because it's an historic building with a very modern building to the rear. Uh, with completely different materials and a, a different palette. And I think it's successful in that it, um, the contrast of the old and the new really accentuates the existing building in a very positive way. And I think that's something we tried to do with the Hastings building. So in the, in the spring, uh, Mary and Sharon invited me over to take a look at the building and we walked around and their, their thought was uh, they, were, they wanted to uh, rent the first floor to retail, uh, possibly two stores since there at one point had been two storefronts. But the primary thing they wanted to talk about was how to turn the, the back L into some apartments. And um, I looked at that and it's a, it, there hasn't been much work in that, in that building and over that section of the building in over a hundred years. It's in, it's in bad shape, uh, low floor to floor heights, uh, it's it, to, to renovate that you might get two, maybe three residential units out of that. And given today's codes, especially energy codes, uh, it was just going to be a very expensive project and probably wouldn't pay for itself. 
But as I started to look at the project and at the parcel, and I think if you go to the right side, uh, the, the, the site plan, the uh, town GIS maps that are to the right, you'll see that the uh, the parcel for uh, Hastings is, is a fairly large parcel, 180 something feet deep and uh, 85 feet wide. Um, and you can see 45, the small rectangle there that's kind of tucked up against the other building. So in looking at this, what what made the most sense for them as, uh, you know, that th this building is their legacy. It's a family uh, heirloom. And um, they really wanna do something that is going to be uh, beneficial to the town, but also allows them to, to, to maintain this building. What made sense um, is to build uh, a structure behind it. Uh, it's a perfect place for more density. Um, the, the main thing, the main plus here is that it's, actually behind uh, Merchant's Row, it sits back behind all the buildings. So and a taller building, like a five-story building will not have as much of a presence on uh, the main street as, as uh, all the other buildings that have been, the five-story buildings that have been built recently. So um, I think if we go maybe to the next slide, okay. Um, so this is the parcel. And as you can see, that white area is just pavement. It's that's about 85 by 100 feet or so. Uh, when you take down the existing three-story L, you have a very uh, clean uh, place to build, surrounded by other structures. And uh, the other uh, existing building to be demolished there on the right, that's 44. Uh, after talking about this and starting to do some sketches of how uh, a five-story building might be added on here, um, Barry's wisely said, well, maybe we should find out what's going on with the, the brown building next door. And eventually they, um, they made an offer on the building that was accepted and uh, bought the building. Uh, a demolition delay was applied for back in uh, October, November. A uh, six month delay was put on the project until uh, the latter part of April this year. Um, the, the, the trick with a, a, a project like this is that um, the, the existing building has fairly high floor to floor heights, 13 feet or so. And the maximum height for a building, unless you're looking for a, a special permit, and we are not looking for any special permits. This will only be site plan review from the planning board. Um, the, the maximum height is 55 feet. So you know, 11 feet or so per floor is, is not gonna line up well with two, two uh, floors at 13 feet. So part of the trick was to make this one building, yet at the same time, uh, mesh it together in a way that, that the, the staggered floor lines wouldn't matter. Uh, maybe go to the next slide, Jonathan. Sure. So in a simplistic way, uh, what you'll see here is the, the building on the right is three stories, the existing building to be renovated uh, from top to bottom. The first floor will be, as uh, you probably know already, a, a, will be a bookstore for Amherst College. It'll be housing uh, residential on the upper floors. And the new building would be five stories, uh, 55 feet high. And that gray area between them is really the area where uh, circulation, elevator, stair, uh, hallways, that's where we can make the difference uh, between the, the, the floor heights. There would be a two-sided two elevator that will allow for those staggered floor plates. Um, the first floor, as you'll, as you'll see, is just going to be as originally we looked at it being parking, but you just don't get many parking spaces under there. And a, a building of this sort, a residential building with, with just a, a retail on the first floor of the existing um, requires other things other than uh, uh, parking. We needed uh, mechanical space and, and um, uh, garbage pickup and bike racks and those kind of things. So, so the first floor is really allocated to those, those uses. And then there'll be four floors of uh, apartments. So that is basically the kind of the concept that was developed. I did some sketches and uh, brought it up to a certain point and then handed it over to Jonathan. And uh, then they have been developing the design. And I think I'll turn it back over to him and let him 
Uh, and it looks like Barry might have his hand up there. Yeah, Barry does have his hand up. So we will we will pause and and let Barry speak. I just wanted to make a slight correction, John. John, you have set the street numbers wrong. The building, the small brown building to come down, is fifty-five. Oh, yes, right. And Hastings store was forty-five, and the Hastings building is forty-five. That's right. I just right. wanted to correct that. That's all. Yeah. We move one more slide ahead, uh, just kind of building a, a little bit on what John was saying. Again, you know, here in the in the brighter tone are the two those two kind of main blocks. But now we're kind of looking at, at it uh, as it will be carved out uh, at the uh, at the ground floor level. Um, and this more tan tone that again that's going to be that that building core uh, that'll have the back and front elevator and stairs um, from a site plan perspective. Uh, as John noted earlier, this is a this is a all a kind of paved surface now. There's really no uh, greenscape at all, uh, with the exception of a little tiny bit of a planter that extends along the the west side of the building and it, that's that sets in a um, in a in a wood uh, timber retaining wall that's uh, scheduled to be uh, left as is, um, and uh, in place of the uh, 55 building, the existing 55 building, we're proposing a new kind of entry plaza that would be about 39 feet wide between the Hastings building and the adjoining building and about uh, just shy of 60 feet uh, deep. Um, that would include an accessible ramp that will take us or accessible path that will take us uh, into the uh, main floor level that I'll this is also will serve as the second way out for the retail space. Um, and then proceeding further back, uh, we're kind of expressing an arcade uh, with the upper portions of the building, the residential portions of the building will extend out to this line. If folks can see my, my cursor, um, but there'll be an open arcade uh, that will uh, provide access back to uh, some accessible parking places, um, and eventually uh, storage for bicycles, trash, second means of egress. Um, but as John you know noted earlier, the, the first floor is, is our accessory uses to the residential uses. There won't be any residential space uh, units on, on this first floor level. Um, Jonathan, if, if I could just interject yep. one thing. Uh, when when the uh, brown building came into play, uh, the first thought was, well, maybe we'll just extend the existing building out there and build more apartments. But it, it as we looked at that, it really didn't make much sense. It didn't uh, add that much space. It would be expensive space to add. And we really liked the idea of keeping the tall part of the building to the rear of the site and and creating a, a kind of a new vehicular and pedestrian act. Uh, entrance there. So um, even though the brown building uh, takes space there now, we felt uh, removing it entirely made for the made for a more uh, uh, appropriate project. Uh, just to touch on a couple other items, uh, kind of a, from a site plan perspective, there's an existing easement that runs along uh, the southern side of the of the lot. Uh, it's about 11 feet wide. Um, this will be uh, kept open uh, as it as is required, uh, the green lines represent kind of a ten foot setback. Um, while we could have gone closer to the property lines, uh, this really is it was a good kind of balancing point between being able to have nice glazing um, and and having enough kind of space to work in, as it were. I'm going to move to our next slide. So this is the these are existing and new views sort of standing on the uh, the opposite side of the the sidewalk uh, on the corner by where the the farmers market uh, has has been in past years before they moved out into the actual green space of the common um, so down here in the lower right you can see the existing uh, uh, 55 south pleasant structure and the existing 45 building here um, and then in our new, uh, you can see that five-story form uh, of the new uh, piece at the back. And this tower expression is really the expression of that connecting space uh, where we'll have our elevator and stair that kind of moderates between the two forms, the larger portion at the back 
and the existing piece at the front. Uh, we're not planning to make any major changes to the existing uh, exterior of uh, the uh, 45 South Pleasant uh, building. We are proposing to extend the color around the corner to, to make it look uh, more finished, especially when this brown building comes down, there's likely to be scarring in the brick. And while we'll do a, a good job of, of trying to piece in new brick or, or um, you know, make that scarring less ap apparent, I think that the yellow will be a nice way or painting that, taking that color around the corner, be a nice way of uh, kind of blending that, that form and turning it around the corner. The uh, folks uh, who will be running the bookstore at some point will come back for their signage. We don't know what their signage package looks like, so we're not presenting any new signage uh, tonight. We do know that they intend to paint the, um, as we can see down here in that lower right picture, the kind of reddish uh, color of the uh, the storefront is now to paint that a dark gray. Um, when they come back to present the signs, they, they may have a swatch for that. So I've, I've done my best to kind of um, show the design intent, uh, but I don't have I don't have that color swatch with us. Uh, the existing lighting along the front will remain. We are proposing, and and you'll see a detail of this a little further in, uh, some new historic signage, kind of remembering the AJ Hastings store. Um, focusing now back on that kind of front entry plaza. Uh, on the right is the pathway that would take you up a slope path to the main entrance, and then towards the left. Marked off by these bollards uh, is that pathway to the arcade that will take you back to those parking spaces and uh, some of the first floor amenity spaces that need access to the exterior. Uh, we're proposing a new sign here at the front. Um, while we won't see it in this view, uh, when we come to some other views, you'll see that uh, obviously we're going to need a new uh, transformer for this project. That transformer is placed in the front, but we're screening that with plantings. Um, John, chime in if I if I miss anything. But, oh, well, <clears throat> uh, in the on the next sheet, we'll we'll have some examples of what the the proposed materials are. So I'll call them out here, and then we can look at them on the next sheet. Uh, we are proposing a brick base uh, for the um, residential block at the back. Uh, you know that will stretch all the way back around to to the uh, the west and north sides. Above that, we're proposing a vertical. Um, metal siding, uh, which is, as John noted, uh, one of the materials that's on the 79 South Pleasant project at the back at on the newer building. Um, and here are proposing two colors, two tones, a kind of reddish tone that that hopefully will bring uh, pick up the the warmth of the brick that surrounds uh, the uh, surrounds the site uh, in the adjacent buildings and then a gray tone. Uh, and then an accent in a dark gray uh, at the at the spandrel panels. Uh, so this next sheet, hopefully that's come on your screens, shows two views from the south. The upper one is really the one you experience um, because there's still portions of the adjacent building that will tend to block your view from most most angles. So you know we're behind. If if you'll bear with me just for a moment, I'm gonna. Go back several pages just to to orient a little bit. That that next view you're seeing um, is kind of taken back here behind this adjacent building. There we go. So from the south, you you will see the full uh, or uh, excuse me, five story form. We've grouped the windows together uh, so that we're not looking at just a series of kind of anonymous punched openings, um, but but some nice groupings uh, that that I think give the building a really nice, elegant, but simple character. Uh, again, here's some examples of those uh, siding materials. While it will be oriented vertically as proposed here, this is the style of the of the metal panel that it that will be the basis of the kind of main block of the building. And then this style of metal panel is at the spandrel. So the, you have a vertical uh, material here on the base of the building and a horizontal accent at the spandrels. Um, the, the colors proposed are shown here in the upper right. 
this is this great excuse me my voice is beginning to crack uh the the main body is proposed as, as a, a chromium gray these are colors from a company called uh Morin metals uh, which which is out of connecticut um and then that accent at the tower uh is in this redwood color and again these spandrels are this dark uh what they call a blue gray to me it's it just looks like a, a pretty neutral gray um Looking at this more flat on view, one of the things we can begin to see is is kind of a side view of what this uh, entry plaza will, will look like. Here you can see the uh, transformer um, and the screen plantings that we're proposing uh, to make that discrete from the street. Move on to the next page. So shows you two more views. Uh, this would be the top one here. This is the view from the west, from the parking lot. Uh, to the west of the Emmer Cinema, um, where you'll see the building form setting behind it. Again, this is that kind of flat on view, which is really hard to see with the with the trees and the adjacent uh, building. And then lastly, we have a view uh, down the alleyway between uh, the Bank of America building and the Emmer Cinema. Um, and this is the, the view you would see in that that space. And then this is the the full form of the facade, uh, most of which would sit behind the Amherst Cinema building. And lastly, to focus on that entry plaza in a little bit more detail, uh, in the upper left, you can see a slightly elevated view, again, with that walkway, a covered walkway uh, that takes you back to the entry, some bollards to, uh, to separate the, the travel lane, the car vehicle lane from the from the pedestrian zone. Um, we're also proposing a material change uh, from from asphalt to to uh, concrete to highlight that difference. This is a view taken in the opposite direction. So if you, if you were standing back here, if you can see my cursor, uh, looking back towards the street, back towards the common, this is the view you would see. There's a small set of stairs that connects uh, these two pathways. And we're proposing a new kind of pylon uh, masonry and granite uh, uh, building sign for the 55 building, uh, which would be here in the site plan. Again, this is the transformer and its pad. Uh, building entry is here, uh, a bike rack, a bench, um, some seasonal or perennial uh, flowering plantings at the front, and uh, some ornamental grasses, which have nice uh, three season uh, color and form at the back, providing most of the, the screening at the transformer. Uh, here's a detailed look at that uh, historical kind of marker sign uh, for the AJ Hastings uh, piece, and then uh, our signage for the, the building signage. John, did I miss anything as I was no, I think you, there. you covered it. I, I, I think the big story here is that we're uh, trying to do our best to respect the existing building and push it to the forefront and keep a five-story structure to the rear uh, and respectful of the existing building and creating a, a, a nice zone between the two buildings uh, as an entry point. Well, thank you for that presentation and thanks for starting us off with a little history lesson. It's nice to hear about the the long storied past of these of these buildings um and kind of giving us some insight into the you know kind of positive amherst focused intentions of the team here um i think i want to pause i'm just noticing how many people are in the audience and i'd like to pause to solicit general public comment one more time before we get started on our review because once we do um, we probably won't take a break for hearing from the public so so just a reminder, if you want to be heard for public comment, please uh, use your raise hand function, or if you're calling in, you can use uh, press star nine. Not seeing any hands. Okay, great. Well, we'll just we'll just march on forward. Um, so thank you so much. I what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to read aloud the design review board standard. 
and then ask for members of the DRB to let me know if they have any thoughts or comments on that standard. Um, and we'll just kind of go around and solicit um, feedback. So the first standard is height. The height of any proposed alteration shall be compatible with the style and character of the building, structure, or site being altered and that of the surroundings. So my sense is that it's appropriate for the zoning and the downtown context. And I really appreciate that the five-story portion of the building is pushed to the, the, the back of the block, stepped back from the streetscape, because I think it really re retains the integrity of those historic facades. Is there anybody else who wants to weigh in on this particular item? Yeah, I uh, I would agree. Uh, we have another building someplace or maybe behind Judy's that was at the time people were like all in a tizzy it was a little tall higher, but you know, uh, it really, that, <clears throat> that building and others in the back, they blend in. And I personally don't think that, that this is going to really cause any distraction to the, the downtown the height of the elevator shaft, uh, I have a little bit of a concern about. I, I, but to be honest, uh, looking at that little dumb brown building, I, it's like, well, uh, we lived with that forever. Nobody said anything. And now that it's gone, there is going to be some reaction to this. I think people are going to say, what are you doing? But uh, in terms of the apartment building in the back, I think it makes perfect sense that it can, there, it's a little taller than the uh, frontage. And in my perspective, my own personal uh, opinion, it's okay. I'm a little concerned about the elevator shaft, but uh, it will be back behind the uh, walkway. So. I guess that's all I can say on that. All right. Thanks, Catherine, for sharing that. And I saw, Lindsay, you had your hand in IRL. And then, uh, Pat, you can go after Lindsay. How's that sound? Thank you. Um, yeah, I didn't use the, the appropriate hand. But um, thank you. And this is just a very exciting project. And I'm so happy to see that Hastings is being um, given some, some new life and that the legacy will go on. Um, and I... Um, just a general comment about the the massing of the the larger five story building to the back. Um, I actually think that the elevator shaft being taller um, works to the advantage of reducing the scale of the five story addition on the back because it pops up, so it makes it feel like the the larger portion of the five-story building um, actually sits a little lower. So I feel like that actually um, creates a nice um, counterpoint to um, give the relief of the of the larger mass um, to the back that we wouldn't necessarily get without that, without that taller shaft. So um, I think in terms of the, the use of setting the, the massing back and having that shaft pop up and then bring, bringing the scale of the five-story down a bit, works really well with the site. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Lindsay. Go ahead, Pat. I'm I'm going to echo some of what Catherine said and some of what Lindsay said. Um, I think preserving the Hastings building and um, keeping the, the streetscape familiar um, is, is, is a wonderful effort with that. And the fact that we know that we need more housing um, in Amherst, the, the use of that space for a building that really had had no stated purpose anymore um, seems to meet some of the growing needs of Amherst, um, and it and it's tasteful um, as it's incorporated with the Hastings building. So I I applaud the, the plan and look forward to seeing it. That's great. Thank you. Shall we move on then? Um, our next item is uh, proportions. 
the proportions and relationships of height to width between windows, doors, signs, and other architectural elements should be compatible with the architectural style and character of the building or structure and that of the surroundings. Um, my sense here is that the building really, I think what Lindsay said, it kind of negotiates the, the height change artfully with the that um, circulation spine and the tower. That's hard to call it a tower, but that vertical element there. Um, I think that the, I have two, two thoughts. And one is that, that that vertical volume does feel, it, it doesn't feel too tall, but it almost feels too independent. And I don't know if this is a proportions comment or not, but it, it's in part due to materiality. Um, I think because it's not one or the other or a negotiation of the two, it's something completely different um, in terms of its materials and uh, I wonder if you had considered like continuing the brick base around or the color of the of the panels to integrate it a little, uh, not entirely perhaps, but a little bit more. Um, we, we certainly have done a number of color studies uh, over the last uh, month or so. Um, for us, this we felt this this was a kind of a balance. Um, it's a little it doesn't show in uh, this view particularly well because of the way the shadows are. But the intent is for that um, for this red material to actually continue under the arcade. Uh, and that wall that's set back, you know kind of mm -hmm. the back wall of the arcade would have more of that um, the red the reddish tone in it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, it's you know, it's always a little hard to, uh, you know, Colors, colors are a tough thing, um, and certainly it, it is hard to get them to render uh, perfectly the same on screens as they are in real life. Um, but the intent with this with this red color uh, is to have something that's in you know we're not going to be able to match all the bricks in downtown, um, but to some, have something that's in that same color family. And so I think our hope is that it 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 will it will not seem like all that separate a piece. To answer one question that you you asked, Erica, we did we did consider actually the very first thing we thought about was that the tower should be brick, that that the base should wrap around and then become the tower. Uh, but as we looked at it more, it felt like maybe introducing the metal siding in a color that kind of replicates the brick to some extent. They'll be different, but uh, might be a better solution. So that's the way we went. Yeah, my suspicion is that it's very much about the. The, the rendering quality and the, the the texture and the shadows and all of that in real life is going to make it feel much better integrated. But I think because you're also negotiating the different height levels, mm -hmm. you know, that there, there's just something there at the base that I want to I want to have it feel more integrated. And acknowledging that at the corner, perhaps with some kind of a detail, could be interesting. Um, I'll cede the floor. I see that Karin has her hand up, and then we'll go to Rob. Um, yeah, I like that it's separate. I think it breaks it up a little bit. You you are uh, complimenting it, but it is completely new and it is modern from the windows and the siding. And I like that. I think it's going to add interest and uh, break it up. And I think it's very attractive, uh, though it is very separate. Thanks, Carmen. Go ahead, Rob. So I kind of wanted to echo your comment, Erica, about it feeling a little bit independent. And I think maybe just from the renderings, I guess the red looks a little bit too dark compared yeah. to the brick. And so I guess, you know, maybe when they actually put the the metal siding on there, maybe it won't be as dark as con contrasted from the brick. So maybe if it was closer in color, but still slightly different, it wouldn't feel as independent. But I guess it's hard to kind of judge that now because of the renderings versus what we see in real life. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Lindsay. Um, thank you. So um <clears throat> I'm gonna first touch on the proportion question and then um tie into the, the material point that Erica made. So in terms of proportion, I really appreciate that the 
the width of the windows, the punched opening windows of the historic Hastings building is preserved, but that it works with this kind of more modern, larger scale um, openings that happen throughout the addition and the use of the spandrel to connect the floors. And um, so I think it works really well that the proportion of the the windows are relating to the punched openings of the, the Hastings building, but but they're still much, much larger areas. Um, so that that feels like a, a nice um thoughtful feature. Um as Erica mentioned that there's some redundancy and and overlap between all of our different topics. So it's hard to talk about one in isolation of the other. <laughs> but um I do think that there's some thoughts around materiality um that that are that are relevant to the discussion of what what happens um with the feeling of that corner um and i i'm gonna just hold on that because i think maybe we'll come back to it when we talk about materials i think proportionately it looks it looks like it you know it's consistent with the historic in a nice modern way karen oh Sorry, I forget to I forget to lower it. <laughs> okay, no problem. We all do it. Um, okay, so let's. Oh, sorry, Pat. Go ahead, and then we'll move on to the next one. Oh, you're That's muted, good. though. Sorry. Um, as I continue to look at the rendering, I think the illusion, the way the windows are placed in the building give a sense of three stories as opposed to five. And that is is more consistent with what we see in the streetscape. And so I, th I think that illusion works to the advantage of proportion. Okay. All right, let's step forward to item three, which is relation of structures and spaces. The relation of a structure to the open space between it and adjoining structures should be compatible with such relations in the surroundings. And so here is a place to comment on the, the scale of the public plaza in front of the building, which I think is just worth deeply appreciating on a, on a busy street. Um, and it also really opens up the alley um, and access to the back of the block and Laughing Dog. Um, and things like that. So I think it's, you know, proportionally, uh, relationally appropriate. Does anybody else have thoughts on this particular item? Lindsay, feel free. Yeah, I I love the plaza. I think that's a really great use of that space. And rather than trying to fill that in, it would really feel like it was competing with the existing building in a way. And um, so I think that the use of that area to the landscape and ramp and arcade really works well. Um, and I think this is partly just due to the rendering, but I do I do feel like there's a question around the, the way to bring light and visibility into the arcade. Um, so just thinking about it as, um, as a space that really does need to be opened up in some capacity right now, it feels very much like it's in shadow. And I know that's partly just the rendering, but I also wonder if it might be that way if um, there isn't some intention around how to light it and bring either daylight or both daylight and artificial light in. Mm -hmm. So just a thought there, I don't know if, um, I think that area just needs a little bit of, of attention in terms of light, but I love it as an open space. I think in reality it would be a lot lighter than what's shown in the in the rendering. That it's a, it's it's always red a little bit dark, and at night it's going to be a the the ceiling gives us an opportunity to really light the uh, the entry in a nice way and draw people into the or the front door. Mm -hmm. Both both of these arcade spaces would have you know soffit mounted uh, lights. To, you know, both the accent, the architecture of the pieces themselves, but also make this a, you know, a bright, relatively bright and, and inviting space. Yeah, and it may also be the plantings don't want to get too tall so that you can still see through, um, which obviously is just a modeling graphic thing right now. But it is something to think about in terms of the landscaping that 
you know, keeping that sight line open as much as possible with whatever the height of the planting um, that that low wall is. Um, it's an important piece. All right, shall we move on then to the next? Um, promised some overlap, uh, shape, the shape of the roofs, windows, doors, and other design elements should be compatible with the architectural style and character of the building site and that of its surroundings. Um, and I think other people have alluded to this already. It's kind of the, the um, shape of the new apertures on the side of the Hastings block and then the scale, you like how you transition the scale of the individual openings to the grouped openings on the back, I think is wholly appropriate here um, as is the shape of the building form. So. Are there any other comments on shape? I see Rob, go ahead, Rob. I also want to state that um, I like how they kept to the flat roof style that you'd see on that block and corner. So I guess in terms of shape and integrating the outside buildings and surrounding structures, they did a really nice job with that. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Um, okay, next stop is landscape. Any proposed landscape development or alteration should be compatible with the character and appearance of the surrounding area landscape and streetscape elements, including topography, plantings, paving patterns, should provide continuity and definition to the street, pedestrian areas, and surrounding landscape. Lindsay, you already alluded to um, a landscape comment. Do you want to pick this one up and start us off? Um, I mean, I think it's just a great place to bring landscape in and we've got a lot of hardscape in that area um so there's just so much opportunity to really bring in some life and i love the way you're doing that um i think as i noted before just thinking about scale and making sure that it's not <clears throat> you know um inhibiting sight lines and visibility of the entrance um yeah that's yeah. thanks I guess the only other comment would be like with the transformer, um, if that wants to be hidden, just thinking about plantings that might offer some year round coverage. That's probably already on your radar. Yep. Yeah, we I want to putting the, the transformer in other locations, but it really had to be up, up front. Yeah. Um, I want to second something that Lindsay kind of leaned into earlier. I, I am a little bit concerned about the, I think it's, you labeled it as a dogwood, something tall in the front. Um, I think the visibility, the ability to see through as deeply as possible um, is going to be a, a nice uh, quality um, and an advantage for anybody who's like coming in or out in the, in the evening, say. Um, so yeah, I think that I would stick with low plantings or if you did have something taller to kind of move it closer to the transformer rather than having it right up at the front, but that's. I guess I was seeing it as an opportunity to kind of introduce, uh, certainly it's gonna to have to be a dwarf uh, variety yeah. one way or the other, um, but to, you know, uh, provide a, a sort of a, a little bit of a street tree. Um, but certainly we, we'd be open to uh, other plantings. We're not fixed on this in any way. Maybe we could just mark it down as something that's worth further study. What I think sure. that you want to avoid is having the, the canopy, as if it's a dwarf, yeah, we're, we're, having we're, the canopy at eye level, you want it above yeah. the head, um, which is not, not really how, oh, well, maybe it's sort of shown that way in the render, but um, I see Chris. Hello, everybody. Um, I just wondered if you are able to do anything with the way the transformer looks. I noticed that some electrical boxes around town have been painted by artists. And is there anything that you can do from the beginning to make it less, um, you know, sort of monolithic? Just a question. I, I suspect we'd be open to to some sort of art project there to, to help it blend in. I mean, ultimately, 
transformer boxes are transformer boxes. They're 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 large boxes. They are you're never going to completely hide them. Um, and I think you know I think we have an opportunity. There, there's enough space for for screening here to uh, that that it will go away. It'll visually disappear over time. Mm -hmm. I think Eversource probably uh, is in control of that. Uh, if they would allow us to paint it, uh, we'd probably consider that. I think mm -hmm. that would be very interesting to do something there, but. That's something we can look into. This building does have a nice graffiti history, so. <laughs> <laughs> this is true. All right, any other comments on landscape or should we move forward to scale? All right, um, the scale of a structure or landscape alteration should be compatible with its architecture or landscape design style and character of that of the surroundings. The scale of ground level elements, such as building entryways, windows, porches, plazas, parks, pedestrian furniture, plantings, and other street and site elements should be determined by and directed towards the use, comprehension, and enjoyment of pedestrians. I have no comments. <laughs> Does anybody else want to jump in on this one? Karen, go ahead. I'm wondering, is this a place where there could, is there room for chairs or any sort of places for people that uh, want to sit outside and read a newspaper and would be invited to this area? Uh, or is this, is it too small for that? Certainly, I mean, we're, we're, we're already suggesting a bench here. Um, the, because of the way the grades kind of work on this site, you know, uh, a portion of these, um, kind of container walls or retaining walls. I'm not really retaining walls, but you know they they could be sitting walls as well. I think that would be lovely. Yeah, that's a really nice point. Feels like it's that. a place where you might want to stop for a while. Yeah, of course, there's the newly renovated North Common right across the street too. That's true too. In case I glossed over it earlier, there's also going to be a place for a bike rack, uh, and there there simply aren't enough of those in downtown. I'm sure that will get heavily used. Thanks. All right, we'll move on to directional expression. Uh, building facades and other architectural and landscape design elements shall be compatible with those of others in the surrounding area. With regard to the dominant vertical or horizontal expression or direction related to the use and historical cultural character as appropriate. So we, again, the overlap here when we were talking before about proportions of that tower, I think that the kind of the the stair block um, does read as to me. I think very vertical, <laughs> which I actually think it's not the verticality that I have an issue with. It's just the, you know, how it modulates between the two volumes. So I, I think that the, the expression here of the building, and we haven't talked much about the design of the, the kind of a, the new addition on the back, but I, I think that, you know, it does a really nice job of kind of just claiming its contemporary space and um, feeling like it's relating to the directionality and proportionality of the, the historic buildings as well. So my two cents there. Lindsay, go ahead. Yeah, I think we've touched on most of this. Um, I wonder about the height of the arcade roof and if there's, if this is, um, could you go to an elevation? Erica, please. Sure. Or Jonathan. Yeah, so I'm I think what I'm my eye is picking up on a little bit is the the datum of the transition between the metal on the addition to the back and the brick below, and then around the front where the, the band of signage is on the on the historic facade. And it feels like both of those are raised up a bit higher. Um, and so it's it's partly that I think the roof line is reading a little bit narrow 
for the band at the front. And I don't think it needs to be that thick by any means, but it's just, it's feeling both kind of thin and low. Um, I really love how the, the columns come down and, you know, you have this kind of like, kind of like touching into the, to the existing building um, while leaving it open on the other side. Um, but I just, I guess I'm just kind of questioning like where that datum is with re respect to the others, um, both the one in the back and the the front. Did you guys have thoughts on that? If I'm it, sure I'm under, hearing you correctly, Lindsay, you're wondering, you know, is this the right height basically for mm -hmm. this piece to relate to the to the front? Mm -hmm. um, I wouldn't. I certainly, I personally wouldn't want it any higher. Um, you know, it, could you pick up this line, that kind of transition between the mm -hmm. um, the sign band and the and the storefront glazing? Perhaps I going back. I, I was just trying to do this in my head, but it's hard to do that. Um, my concern, you know, we could certainly look at bringing it down some. I, I'd want, you know, that's that's a conventional, uh, you know, call it seven foot door, mm -hmm. um, and so we're at something like nine foot to the underside so i wouldn't want it to be too much lower at least from the experience kind of being under it um i don't know john what what's your thought well in in the very early probably one of the earliest schemes uh the that black line that separates the the brick and the and the the, the taller section of the rear that line there was actually brought all the way around, and that became the right. the canopy itself. Mm -hmm. And um, we looked at it, and it felt it like it was too high. It just yeah. proportionally felt high. And also carrying that line around kind of truncated the 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 stair tower. So when we disconnected them and lowered the the uh, the arcade, uh, we 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 had the we took the stair tower all the way through so there's no horizontal line wrapping through there and i we we thought that helped kind of separate the five-story piece from the from the front yeah there was um, one's kind of like it be lower it it looks high here but as jonathan was saying that the the grade is sloping up a couple of feet there to the front yeah. door so by the time you get to the door it's not that tall it, it, it we could, up we could still feet, study yeah. it a little bit and move it or yeah. move it around yeah, that's an interesting part. I mean, I wonder if without that piece wrapping around, and I do like that you removed that, you know, letting the tower kind of have its own um, its own mass. I guess I just, yeah, I would be curious to see if it, if it did align with that transition on the back, on the addition, um, if the canopy aligned with that transition between the metal and the brick on the back, how would that feel then relating to the, the, historic facade it just it feels like both of those are almost at the same level and then this is just like a little bit lower what do other people think is we're up in here i know this is the thing i've been wrestling with like throughout is that how, how to how negotiate mm -hmm. the 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 two those two really strong horizontal data mm -hmm. in the back at the above the brick arcade and then in the front um and i can see why you have landed with the just insert something vertical and then let that in the the kind of spandrel panel be the thing that gives right, like kind a of breaks it apart and they can both kind of exist in their own space yeah yeah i'm still wrestling with it a little bit and i think that um it, it, i'm not quite sure what it is but maybe there's a, you know even the introducing a spandrel below that the lowest window let me see if i can annotate another thing that we might uh, consider here is that the that the front facade has a lot of detail on it and you see those uh, sort of horizontal tan bands there those are actually a, a different they're they're not brick they're a, they're stone and they got painted uh, when they painted the front of the building but mm -hmm. one or two or Somehow we could turn the corner with some of that paint and um, either run it back and, in other words, try to mesh the front with the side a little bit more and, and uh, integrate the uh, canopy a little bit more in doing that. Mm -hmm. One thing that might be helpful at this point, uh, if 
you all don't mind my my pausing kind of sharing this i do have an image that wasn't part of the formal packet um but that kind of shows the uh a sense of what it would look like kind of coming up the street uh you know we've been very focused on this one view and um part of me wonders you know oops that, that's not what i wanted to pull up that's just a right. view of the I think pack. that's great and then Jonathan while you're pulling that up I wonder Patricia would you like to make your your comment and do you need the visual to do it oh you're muted though sorry about that um I I had the same reaction that there was something that wasn't sinking for me with the the residential building lines and the um roof in in the uh, portico and and then looking at the front of Hastings um there's that band um black band and the roof to the side kind of hits in the middle of that is there a happy medium to bring it to to be the to the top of that band and have some continuity there mm -hmm. Um, it's just a thought, but there was something, there was something about the lack of vertical continuity that I couldn't quite put my fingers on. John? I think those are good points and something for us to look at. Yeah. Thank you. yeah. Lindsay, go ahead. I was just, John, are you saying that, um, that where those gooseneck, um, light fixtures are mounted, there's like a gray painted? Yes stone um and so wrapping perhaps wrapping that band around might create a connection with the top right. of the canopy that's exactly. a nice idea so anyway just a, just a thought to discuss but um in terms of that item that was my only piece i really love the perspective though that you get from this angle of seeing those um, tapered yeah paper beam mm -hmm. underneath the canopy i think what this shows and we could, could have done many others that uh you really don't see this building except when you get down to the uh to that opening but for most of the areas along south prospect street and or south pleasant street and north pleasant street you're not going to see the structure yeah your focus will be on the historic building and on the insertion of that that plaza into that space mm -hmm. All right. So, um, all right, uh, Chris, and then Karen, and then we'll see if we can move on to our last two points. I had a question about the painting of the cornice of the existing building. Were you planning to paint that a darker color than what is there now? It looked like. No, we're we're trying to do our best to 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 it, for the purposes of a of a rendering uh, match what's there it, at this time. There's no one there's there's no proposal to change any of the colors. Thank you. Other than, as I said earlier, uh, painting the, the red part of the storefront uh, a dark gray. And where did Karen go? Uh -oh. oh, no, okay, With, withdrew her hand. <laughs> All right, great. So um, the next one's a bit of a, a catch-all, and I'm going to actually combine this one and, and number nine. So I'm going to read eight and nine together. So eight is architectural and site detail. Architectural and site details, including signs, lighting, pedestrian furniture, planting, paving, along with materials, colors, textures, and grade shall be treated as to be compatible with the original architectural and landscape design style of the structure or site, and to preserve and enhance the character of the surrounding area. In the downtown business districts, these details should blend with their surroundings to create a diverse, functional, and unified streetscape. And then number nine is about signs. The design of signs should reflect in the scale and character of the structure and site and its surroundings. Signs should simplify and clearly, or, yeah, simplify and clearly identify individual establishments, buildings, locations, and uses while remaining subordinate to the architecture and larger landscape. So, like I said, it's a bit of a catch-all, and I know this is a place where 
like you mentioned before, uh, Jonathan, in your presentation, that we're not seeing all of the signage, but we can comment on uh, what you have suggested. Um, and we're also not seeing uh, all of the lighting, but there's a, a mention of light, the, the bollards will have a lighting component. Yeah. Um, I, I can, you know, obviously we're fairly early in the design yeah. phase. We, we have not selected fixtures for the most part or at all to be more accurate um but the intent would be to to have some lighting in the bollards and you know how many do we need uh and if they're lit you know that that'll be figured out with kind of a photometric plan um but we would also have uh, soffit mounted lighting in the arcades um we've talked internally about having the the signed letters be uh backlit so they mm -hmm. glow in the evening um you know, obviously the, the back parts of the building, there'll be some very utilitarian lighting over the doorway so that we're getting the correct number of foot candles for exits and things like that. But should also mention, we haven't really talked about the, the area on the west and the north side of the building, but you will be, you will have pedestrian access all around this building. Uh, if you go back to the southwest corner and turn right, you'll be walking along next to uh, the Gillen building and you'll come to a stairway that goes up behind. Yeah, there's a stairway that goes behind the cinema up to the parking lot there. Um, and then if you keep going around to the north, you're you're on the uh, the south side of the Hammer Cinema building and you go into that, uh, the alleyway that, that runs all the way up to um, Amity Street. So those areas will be well lit as well and actually probably be, be a little more pedestrian friendly than they are now because the mm -hmm. existing building uh, is very close to the property line. Yeah, I, I appreciate that. And that's actually one of the comments that I noted down was what is going to be the lighting conditions and the, yeah. the, those kind of narrower spaces um, on the, the west and north sides of the buildings. So I, I think it's there's at least one safe. Uh, exterior light already on the back of the cinema building. But again, at exterior doorways and, and as appropriate, uh, along the the back sides, we will have the you know, lighting that meets the both the town's requirements when it comes to downcast lighting, um, and the code's requirement for uh, a minimum number of foot candles, mm -hmm. illuminating bay back to a public way. Okay. Are there any other um, comments or questions from the DRB members about anything in this kind of broad category of details? site elements. Lindsay? We have another, any other categories? <laughs> no, that's it. I, we, I've lumped the last one, which is signage into this because. Okay, um, so materials wasn't a separate one? No, it's kind of baked into. Others. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, well then I'll, I'll go ahead and state my comment, which was, um, I know that you're talking about, you know, colors earlier on. Um, I would be really curious to see how it felt to bring the painted color of the Hastings building of that brick over to the painted over to the base of the the brick base of the addition. Um, I feel like there might I, I understand that it's referencing the context of the <clears throat> surrounding brick, and I think that that's <clears throat> a nice integration as well. But because of how many different materials there are in this one area, this one building, it feels like bringing that painted brick to the base might help to unify. So I would just I would just consider that um, as one color study, and unless you've already done it and decided it's not worth considering. Um, and then my other thought was on materials was just that perspective that you just had up where it showed the the planting wall it's like granite can you go back to whatever yeah so the top right image um and it, and this is i'm sure just like a rendering thing but i do think it's an important design detail is how that granite wall if it is granite or whatever it ends up being the planter wall meets the foundation wall of the addition because it's showing as like concrete meets granite and it's kind of a funky transition there. So um, maybe just looking at what that, if there's a way to kind of bring a consistent material across. 
Good point. Mm -hmm. And the, the yellow working. study could easily be done. Yeah. Well, looks great. <clears throat> Catherine, go ahead. Yeah, <clears throat> so this is a catch all. Um, I'm the uh, I'm concerned, or my question is about the uh, ax, uh, drive cars coming in and out. Uh, is this has this always been the traditional cut through uh, from uh, South Pleasant Street back into the uh, back of those buildings? And so my question really more is more about uh, will this development of these apartments create more activity of, of uh, cars coming in and going out onto the sidewalk and then onto the uh, street? Uh, or will there be other ways in which cars can uh, wend their way back in there? Mm -hmm. uh, I see we have I see you have the bollards uh to uh mark where the uh lane for the cars is, but uh to me it's a, a question of safety and uh maybe there's an answer to that. It's my question. Yeah. I'll <laughs> observe that the while there'll be more bodies back there, the number of parking spaces is actually been reduced from what it currently reduced, is. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, yep. But I think it's a fair question. And, you know, yeah, are the, is the lighting, is, are the bollards enough to create a sense of safety <laughs> as cars, however few they may be, are moving back into that space? So it, in some ways, I, I would, I would say that it, I think it's going to be safer than it is today. You know, if we look down here at the existing condition, it's, it's quite narrow. It's only 11 feet. Uh -huh. at that point and there are many scars on both the, the uh both the both the buildings on either side of this where where less than attentive drivers have have uh, met the buildings yeah. um so we're gonna you know we're pro proposing in addition to the bollards a a a curb as well so you know there'll be a a vertical transition and we'll have a visual reminder with with the bollards okay. um you know i i yeah I, I can't categorically give you like a count of how many traffic, you know, ins and outs we yeah. expect. Um, but there are two, just for kind of clarity for folks, actually, I think the best shot is really this one. There's, you know, really three drives or lanes, whatever we might want to call them, that connect it back into that larger back space. You know, it's a bit amorphous behind really, you know, this collection of three or four buildings. Yeah. Um this, you know, ours, that's a part of this project is one. Um, there's another uh, here between 79 and the adjacent building, and then a third one on the south side of the 79 building. You can kind of see down here that, you know, someone's marked up stop, uh, assuming that the traffic flow is this direction. I don't know that any of that traffic flow is that formalized, um, but, you know, there's there, there, there are multiple points. This isn't the only place uh, where people can kind of access that back zone. Right. Yeah. Bit of a challenge. Okay. Um, just kind of looking through. Uh, this is the category that would capture also things like site furniture, and you've indicated bench but we haven't so i think that if you if you do come back with um signage and things like that uh down the road that that's that you might want to make a, a mental note that those are some other things that we'd, we'd like to see signage yes, the, the actual cuts on, on that sort of thing i think yeah. barry has his, his hand yeah up. i just see that barry go ahead thank you i just want to point out that right now the way the existing condition is there is no possibility of separation of pedestrian and vehicular traffic and we are creating that hopefully to have a safe passage for the pedestrians from the small i believe uh a lot smaller amount of cars going in the back in and out hastings had deliveries uh to the rear and they ran their delivery service out of there and there's quite a few parking spaces there 
uh, now that will be eliminated. So I think we've made a good job of separating pedestrian vehicles. That's my only point. Thank you. Appreciate that. Thank you. All right. Um, DRB, any additional comments? Karen, please. I'm I'm really excited about this development. I think it's it's really going to do a lot to enliven that whole part of town, bring pedestrians in and <clears throat> talking to the younger generation. My daughter has always imagined that the whole place behind there is gonna be outdoor seating, no cars at all. And finally Amherst will have a center where you can meet outside. So this is kind of a very exciting entry to that um, that new development that we hope will eventually come. Um, I love it. Thanks. Great. All right. So we had a couple, if I'm remembering correctly, and Rob, I wonder if you could help to sum up. We didn't have very many directives, um, although I do think that everybody would appreciate some color study or material <laughs> study around the, the, the base of the stair tower, that mm -hmm. point of entry. Um, am I am I wrong about that? Uh, there's quite a few things I took down there in that. I can go over them if you if you'd like to consider keeping them in the recommendations. Um, mm -hmm. but these aren't really directive in terms of they have to do it. It's more just a suggestion of a way you can move forward that might be more appealing. Um, but the first one deals with the elevator shaft building about how to make it feel less independent from the surrounding buildings. That was one comment that you brought up. Um, we have the um, finding ways to incorporate more outdoor lighting into the arcade area. You know, it's possible they already done that, but um, that was just a suggestion that was brought up by Lindsay. You have the um, consider the year round coverage of plantings for the uh, screening of the transformer. So using species that would provide coverage all year round. Um, Consider having a consistent height of plantings to preserve the sight lines from the street of the entrance of the building because that one plant, the dogwood seemed too tall, right. so you right. couldn't see past it too well. Um, to, to consider a mural on the transformer, if allowed. So I emphasis, if allowed. So we're not going to hold you to that. Uh, <laughs> uh, see what else. We have consider integrating more seating areas or natural seating features along some of that little planter stone wall. Uh, which Karen brought up. And we have consider looking at the continuity of the pavilion bands and connected to the painted gray area of the Hastings building. Consider that as an idea to preserve the continuity of that little trim banding there. Mm -hmm. um, I know Lindsay brought that one up. I don't know if you want me to keep that point. Um, yeah, uh, Lindsay just is not on the screen at the moment. I think that the word pavilion in there. Okay. Heard yeah. I, that one, I would, I would just change that, I think, to... Um, like the, it's really the 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 fascia band. The, the fascia band, yeah. It's the signage. Okay. Um, canopy, yeah. canopy fascia. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'll I'll put canopy slash fascia slash um awning <laughs> to make it less confusing. That's <laughs> <laughs> everybody's right. language. There you go. Um. <clears throat> then we have the. Pat brought this up, the continuity of the roof line for the Hastings building. I don't know if there's much the architects could do there with that one, but it seemed that from that side profile, it was kind of cut up in segments um, in terms of mm -hmm. heights. Yeah, right there. Um, and I know the color is not going to be dark because you mentioned just for rendering sake, it's a good way to differentiate that top cornice from the side of the Hastings building. But I guess there was a comment about maybe better integrating that to be more continuous because it looks kind of choppy. I don't know how the other board members feel about that. Yeah, I think that the, the, the stair tower was the subject of much conversation. There's really, we're yeah. not, there's no change to the the, Hast the original Hastings building roof lines. That's, that's Okay. So I must have misheard that, that comment. So I'm going to yeah. scratch that one. All right. And then I have two more on the back. So we have consider a yellow brick for the addition to mimic the Hastings building. Did mm -hmm. I capture that one correctly? Okay, so I'll make sure. And then we have consider using a 
material to blend the planter concrete where it meets that building foundation for better mix was the last comment that I had. Okay. Um, I don't know if I'm missing anything. DRB members, do you feel that your comments are reflected in those notes? Okay, not hearing any thoughts. Um, I see that Barry's got his hand up. Barry, do you wanna jump in on anything there? His hand may have been up, still up from before. I oh, may have yeah. forgotten to take it down. Yeah. Fair. All right. So, with with that list of recommendations, um, may I request a motion to um, approve this project with recommendations? I move to approve this project with recommendations. Thank you. A second. Second. Great. And then all those in favor? Oh, is there any discussion? My apologies. No, okay. And all those in favor, please raise your hand, say aye. Aye. Okay. okay, we have a unanimous approval. Thank you, June Riddle Thank team you. and Barry Roberts for popping in. Um just curious how many um how many apartments are gonna be in this building? The number is still in flux. Mm -hmm. Because we don't quite know yet what the what the ratio of unit types is going to be, sure. So that'll kind of drive it. Uh, you know, Barry and Gail in his office uh, focus a lot on on making sure they're they're matching the unit types to what the market bears. Yeah, right, 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 right. Um, the logic on the upper floors and the rears is maybe four per floor or something like that, one in each corner. Mm -hmm. uh, also is in flux based on market conditions. Sure, well, that's nice. Nice to hear. And do you have any? Do you happen to have a sense of what the if your uh, new volume is fifty five feet? Um, what the height of the the block just to the south is the the Brody block? Do you know? Oh, hmm. I do not know the height of the Brody block. I know that our, you know, that the Hastings building is about uh, 46 or was it 46 or 42? I was looking at this morning. Yeah, I think it's, it's, I think it's something like 42 feet to the, to the uh, cornice line here. Mm -hmm. And then it, you know, obviously kind of tapers away down towards the back. I think the midpoint of the roof is more like uh, 36 or 38 feet. Um, I feel like the Brody block is a little bit taller, uh, but that could simply be because the floor to floors are taller and yeah. it all kind of stretches out. Well, four stories, three stories, you know, it's always just, I'm just curious. It's just a curiosity that I had. I don't need to keep everybody also, all my questions, but. It's the, the, uh, the grade continues the slope to the South there. Right. So by the time you're down to where Vera Cruzana is, you're, you're a good uh, five feet or so down from where the Hastings entrance is. Right. Yep. Well, thank you all very much for coming tonight, sharing your time. Thank you us. for your comments. Those were all very uh, helpful and, and thoughtful. Appreciate it. Super. Looks thank great. You. Really exciting. Yeah. All right. So, all right. folks, we'll move on. Uh, just thank a couple you. more things to do. Thanks, y'all. And um, we uh, next on the agenda is approval of our December 18th uh, meeting mm -hmm. minutes. I know you all had a chance to review them in advance. <laughs> I will share my I screen. I did not. <laughs> see the slow scroll that we're so good at. All right, so Karen was not, didn't join us. Uh, no general comment. And then here's the, the first of the projects we reviewed the elementary school. So just make sure that your comments are reflected accurately there. The discussion is really the important part.
¿sí? If someone's all set, do you want to make a motion to approve the meeting minutes or make a suggestion for changes? I move that we approve the minutes of December 18th. <laughs> December 18th. December 18th. Okay. Thanks, Catherine. Second? I second. <laughs> Discussion? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Karen is abstaining. Great. Thank you very much. Um, what's next? Other business? None that I'm aware of. Okay. I just want to say, I think this is three meetings in a row where we've had this like substantial review because stuff is happening in Amherst. This is really exciting. Thank you all for your patience as we wade through these big projects. It's and important. two of those are town projects too. That's right. That's the better part. <laughs> Can I, um, I just, um, I noticed that we keep kind of coming back to the redundancy factor of our design yeah. criteria. Uh -huh. And I wonder if it's worth considering a revision at some point to clarify the the guidelines and make them perhaps even a little more reflective of the current makeup of the downtown because a lot of it's like referencing sort of this consistency that really is not um like we're not trying to replicate historic facades anymore you know we're really trying to complement and create a certain kind of like fabric that feels that feels cohesive but not consistent you know so yeah it's funny that you mention it though i wonder if chris wants to weigh in because we form-based code is something that the town is entertaining right so um if, yes the if town that just, comes to pass and we'll have a big revision town did just launch a um, downtown design standards project which you all will be introduced to uh, fairly soon um, we just hired Dodson and Flinker. I don't know if that was mentioned to you, but we're very excited about working with them and it will be about an 18 month to two year project. So they will be having a lot of ideas that they'll get from the public and from you about um, how to design and how to allow um, new buildings to come about in the downtown. Um, on the other hand, so that will happen, but you're certainly um, welcome to send us your thoughts about how the current design guidelines could be made better. Um, and now with our new town council, we have kind of a, a rolling way to um, amend our zoning bylaw. We don't have mm. to, you know, for six months before spring or fall town meeting comes up. So, um, you know, we could be working on this while Dodson and Flinker is doing their work. We don't have to wait you know, for two years. So if you have ideas about how this could be made better, we're mm -hmm. willing to um, work with you on that. Hey. Yeah, that is great. Okay. Well, <laughs> with all um, my free time. <laughs> I know. <laughs> be careful what you wish for, Lindsay. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's good to know that input is, is uh, welcome. So Chris, do you have a sense of... ...the group about how we could integrate some feedback into our meeting schedule or something yeah i appreciate that and i'll see i'll talk with rob about it um yep. for maybe for the next meeting rob go ahead i was going to suggest that maybe on a meeting when we don't have a lot before yeah. us just find like a discussion topic we can bring that up and just discuss it as a group that probably mm -hmm. be the best way to do it initially that's great and um chris do you have a sense of now that Dodson and Flinker's been hired what their public or what their, I guess we're a public meeting, what their public meeting schedule would look like. They're starting to work that out. They haven't yeah. worked it out yet, but they're going to come back to us. We had our first meeting with them. I think it was last week. Or oh, maybe fantastic. Or so okay. 
um, they're starting to you know put that together. So we, we should be able to tell you soon, maybe by the next meeting. Super. Thank you all. Thank you. Motion to adjourn. Mm. Motion to adjourn. Thank I you. I move that we adjourn. <laughs> I appreciate everyone's time tonight. Have a nice evening. Appreciate Thank it. you. Okay. You as well. Bye. 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 Good night. Good night.